Hi everybody, this is my part two video in which I design and construct a high bandwidth oscilloscope probe good for accepting 2kV and um, I've been working on P-SPICE models the other day and in the process of doing that I realized that I had overlooked something that I I learned and apparently forgot from something I did three months ago in which I was designing a different oscilloscope probe and you can see right there it's the same thing that I experienced just the other day with this newer probe and that's the the dip as soon as uh, the as soon as the square wave reaches you know the the maximum value then it dips down then it gradually recovers and continues on its merry way and that which I previously learned is due to the parasitic capacitance I got a bunch of 10 picofarad caps here parallel to ground I'll put a link here you can go and watch the video but basically that parasitic capacitance that I was experiencing in this probe here and the uh, and the one that I made was from the shield the shield that I put around all the, uh, the RC combinations inside was apparently introducing a lot of parasitic capacitance before I realized this I ran p-spice models and then that's when I discovered that that's what was causing it and you can see right here there's my parasitic capacitance that I introduced going to ground this is the the high voltage end of it the you know I got all the here's the nine mega ohm resistors four of them each one has a capacitor in parallel with it now on these on the circuit uh, those are five picofarad but um, that's just to make the model work. Some of these values are going to be a little different from the uh, the physical components that I'm working with, but the effect is the same on the P-SPICE model. And so I got these one picofarad simulated capacitors here going to ground. There's my square wave source with a five nanosecond rise time. And here's my simulated probe with the, uh, the ORCAD demo software here I can't actually simulate a transmission coaxial transmission line so I had to simulate one with a bunch of series resistors and inductors and um, capacitance to ground at each node here and then we got the compensation box here's the inductor in the uh, in the physical in the original probe it's 100 nano Henry but I just made it 10 nano Henry here and then there's the, uh, that's the 200 ohm pot and this is the 500 ohm pot I just got those as fixed resistors there's the 430k and the one picofarad to ground and this was this is the green variable cap right here and this one I added in the circuit this is this 140 kilo ohm resistor in series with this one would ultimately and all those in parallel with the the one meg of the scope right here um, that ultimately gives me a ratio, a, a DC division ratio of 100 to 1. Okay, so I'm going to run this simulation now for a period of 100 or a per period of one millisecond. So I'm giving it basically a one kilohertz square wave, and you can see this is pretty much what I saw on the scope a couple days ago got this little dip here right after the initial rise and then it flattens out and then on the negative end we got another dip and if I can zoom in here one more time then you can see that there's a little bit of oscillation here but it quickly recovers and then goes up to 15 volts which is exactly where I want it because I got a the input is set for 1500 volts and we're operating with a 100 to 1 ratio okay so I'm gonna change these parasitic capacitances let's just decrease them to 0.1 picofarad each instead of 1 picofarad because if those are truly the problem then
if I get rid of that capacitance, then you know you would expect that it would fix the problem. And I already figured out that for this one, I need to change that to 56 picofarad. So I can, over here, get a nice square wave. Let me run it. And there we go. And then you can see it looks pretty nice. It's almost, you know, it's a very clean square wave going all the way across, except for right here. You can see that there's a lot of overshoot, almost all the way up to 20 volts. And there it is, a big, big overshoot lasting for about 20 to 30 nanoseconds. And I spent many hours playing around with this and fudging with the numbers and component configurations in this thing until finally it dawned on me that what I'm actually looking at here is one enormous low-pass filter. The compensation box is a low-pass filter. You can see we got, got the signal going through series resistors and there's capacitors to ground. Here we have series resistors and inductors and then we got capacitors to ground uh, in the coax that's a low pass filter and over here inside the the high voltage input stage that's actually a band gap filter because we have these not only these capacitors to ground and feed through resistors but we've got feed through caps as well uh, for the signal to go through and that just makes a whole bunch of weird stuff so I copied this thing into a frequency domain. Let me just put some probes here, some voltage probes at each node. And one on the output here. And these are all still at one picofarad. The parasitic caps are one picofarad each. Let me run that one. And here's the frequency response from 1 hertz all the way up to 1 gigahertz. And you can see there's the green, red, purple, yellow, and, and uh, the magenta. That's all these voltage probes here that I put. And then we've got the cyan one on the output. But basically you can see on the first 9 mega ohm resistor from here to here, at the higher frequencies, we have a certain voltage drop, about 1 kV, but then there is a lesser voltage drop across the, uh, across the second resistor, and a lesser drop across the third resistor, and the lesser still across the fourth resistor. And that's because all these parasitic capacitors are equal. I mean, you can just, just think of it like the, the, you got your, your signal coming in here, and you want it to go down here through all these resistors and capacitors. Um, and of course, while it's doing so, it experiences resistance. It doesn't, wanna, doesn't really want to go through there. So some of it leaks out to here, and most of it, most of the signal current will leak through this first capacitor here because that's the, there's, that's the least amount of impedance that it can go through. In order to come out through this capacitor, it has to go through this as well as this impedance. In order to come out through this capacitor, it's got to go through this, all four of these impedances. And so that got me thinking to maybe make a uh, change these capacitors so that there's, so that they're not equal, but in fact there's a very rapid, ex in fact, exponential increase in capacitance as we go from the probe tip towards the, um, towards the coaxial cable. So I just changed these from, oops, that's in farads. Let me change that to 0 0.01 picofarad, and then 0 0.1 pico, 1 pico, and 10 pico. And I've already worked out before that I need to change the compensation cap, the green, 
variable one here to 32 picofarad. And then let me run this one. Now you can see that the distance from here to here and here to here and here to here and here to here is all not, not exactly the same, but much better than it was before. The, all these voltage drops are almost equal. And that's important because if I change the vertical axis here, to go from zero to, let's say, 18 volts. Then you can see that the, the cyan one, that's the output to the scope. And we have a really nice flat curve, almost perfectly flat, all the way up to 100 megahertz. Now let me go back to this circuit here. Let me change these back to where they were before with one picofarad each. And change this one back to 15. And let me go back to the x-axis here and change that again. There we go. You can see now there's this dip right here at about 3 to 4 kilohertz. And then this other dip over here, which existed in the previous one, but now it's a little more exaggerated. But basically this dip right here, this dip in the frequency response is the same dip that I got in the time domain. There it is, that dip that I had before on the scope. The same dip in the time domain is the, is the dip that I experienced in the frequency domain. So let me go back to the time domain simulation here and change the parasitics to 0.01 and 0.1 and 1 and 10 picofarad. Then 32 on the compensation. And here's what it was before with all those caps being 0.1. And recall there was a really big overshoot here up to 20 volts. And now when I run it again, look at that. Very little overshoot. There's still a tiny bit of a dip right here, but it's much less pronounced than it was before. Let me zoom in. There you can see we got a rapid five nanosecond rise and then for about 10 nanoseconds, 10 to 15 nanoseconds is how long it takes for the signal to get up to where it should be. So that's a very clean, almost perfect transfer of the signal from the input to the output. But of course, that's only on simulation. Once I build it, it'll probably be totally different. So basically what I'm gonna have to do is something that I've already started working on, and that's taking out all the, I'll be removing all those chip resistor capacitors, and uh, I'm gonna solder them onto these little pads here on the circuit board and that's hooked up through a modified BNC connector to the coaxial cable and then the other one's going to go to the con the other end is going to go to the compensation box of course and this whole thing is going to be placed in the shield but it's something I'm working on and I'll save that for the next video thanks for watching